ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nintendo of America President and Chief Operating Officer Reggie Fizame. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for spending some time with us today. This is a day that many of us have been looking forward to for quite a while. And I hope that includes all of you here with us today in New York City, as well as all of you watching via video. Even with all that's been said about Wii U so far, we know there's still key questions to be answered. By the time we're done here on stage, we hope to have provided all those answers. So let's get started. First, Wii U arrives in US stores in another 66 days. And I won't ask you to do the math. That makes launch day here in America, Sunday, November 18th. Who won the bet? <laughs> the next Nintendo innovation and in home gameplay arrives in time to take advantage of the key holiday selling season throughout the Americas. On November 18th, we hope that there'll be a lot of faces across the country, across the Americas, that look just like the opening video that you saw. Those were the actual reactions of people who visited the Wii U Experience Tour this summer. Many of those visitors were already familiar with the innovation that Nintendo has brought to gaming the touch screen of Nintendo DS, the 3D screen of Nintendo 3DS, the introduction of motion control with the Wii Remote. In fact, maybe it was our history of innovation that attracted them to the tour in the first place, to see if the Wii U gamepad could really make that same kind of difference. By the time we're done here today, I think most of you will have answered that question for yourselves. So let's deal with the next few bottom line specifics. On November 18th, Wii U shoppers will have the chance to choose from two different configurations here in the Americas. The first is called the basic set. It includes the Wii console, the Wii U gamepad, an AC adapter for each, a high-speed HDMI cable, and the sensor bar. And as you can see, every component is white. For the deluxe set, it's full dress black. And it includes everything in the basic set, plus additional storage memory, a gamepad charging cradle, and a stand for the gamepad and the console. And the deluxe set also includes Nintendo Land, the best possible way to quickly understand how Wii U changes gaming. And purchasers of the deluxe set will also be enrolled in the deluxe digital promotion. With it, players will receive points for each digital download that they purchase. And those points can be used for the purchase of future digital content from the Nintendo eShop. More details will be announced soon. Some of you might be wondering why we don't see any Wii remotes or Wii nunchuck controllers included in the two sets. The reason is that Wii U already works with your existing Wii controllers and almost all Wii games and accessories. In the United States alone, we have sold more than 100 million Wii remote controllers and more than 65 million nunchuck controllers. So there are already plenty of compatible controllers out there in the wild, and we don't want people to require repurchasing those accessories that they already own. And if you're one of a handful of consumers out there without one of these controllers, we'll be selling them separately. And in fact, Wii U branded versions of the Wii Remote and Nunchuck controllers should start appearing on store shelves in the next few weeks. 
The basic set will carry a manufacturer suggested retail price of $299.99. And for the deluxe set, it's $349.99. Now, we've deliberately answered most of the big questions right off the bat so that you can sit back and enjoy everything else to come. And I'm happy to say that's quite a lot. We've got new game announcements from here at home and from overseas. We'll have a short live demo of a franchise that a lot of Nintendo owners have been waiting for. And we'll show Wii U in a way you haven't considered before. And before it's all over, we'll look at the full and very robust list of Wii U games that'll be available either right on launch day or coming soon thereafter. And with that, let's talk some games. As you saw in our opening video, since E3, some people have had a much longer look at Nintendo Land. And I think it's safe to say, the more they've played, the more they've understood how it realizes the potential of Wii U and the gamepad controller. Among media, including some of the folks right here, the comments we're seeing are like these. Paradigm shifting potential. A pretty robust, super fun package designed around cooperation and friendly, fun competition. The potential for a new flavor of cooperative play is huge. And my favorite, rarely has something so simple been so incredibly clever. But of course, you're going to want to decide that for yourself. And one of the things you're going to want to consider is the new multifaceted Metroid attraction that lives right inside Nintendo Land, along with 11 other attractions. Bill Trinan from our Treehouse Group is just back from Nintendo headquarters in Japan, where he got a long look at the latest update. So I'm going to ask both Bill and Corey Olsvery to come up here and share the highlights of how Metroid has been reimagined for Nintendo Land and Wii U. Guys? Thank you, Reggie. Good morning, everyone. Corey, you ready to have some fun? Let's do it. All right. Now, I've got a few things that I want to tell you about this morning, and I'm going to try to be quick. But the one realization that I hope you all come away with is the notion that many, I think some of these individual attractions here in Nintendo Land, and specifically I mean the ones that we're calling team attractions, have the kind of depth, challenge, variety, and fun that is going to keep you coming back a lot, even if you consider yourself a core gamer. And I say this based on my time playing the game. And I want to show you this morning using just one mode of the team attraction, Metroid Battle. And that's what Corey and I are going to play. Now, you probably saw the foundations for Metroid Battle at E3 2011. But the mode has come a long way since then. And in fact, what we're showing you this morning is an all new mode. And actually, I should clarify, it's Metroid Blast. I said battle. It's Metroid Blast. But this is an all new mode. And it's, in fact, we're not even battling. These are cooperative missions called Mission Assault. And we've got waves of enemies that we need to take out. And you can see Corey fighting on the ground on the main screen. And I'm taking some fire here from some missiles. You can see me controlling the ship up on the, uh, the side screens here. And I'm using the gamepad to do that. And of course, the gamepad is central to this experience. I've got full control. The, the yeah. depth of control is fantastic. Uh, because what I've got here is, oh, yeah, look at that. You've got Corey now grappling from the ship. And he can shoot at the enemies while I fly him around the level. Uh, so we'll go ahead and plop you up here, Corey. Let you drop down there. So I'm controlling the ship using dual analog for movement front to back and side to side. I'm also controlling my elevation. And of course, while Corey's on the ground, he's going to be using his charge up shots. Uh, he may need to dodge enemy attacks. And he may also uh, you know, be using his, grappling, his grapple beam as he did to grab the ship or to grapple around the environment. Man, these guys are shooting a lot of missiles this morning. <laughs> uh, so I've been talking quite a bit here, but uh, 
apart from all of this, I think what's, what's a lot of fun and really great about this game is the fact that we're going to have to use all of our abilities because there's a variety of different enemies. Uh, and you can see that some of them require different tactics, uh, like these cyclones that we've got here, uh, which if I just shoot at, they're going to kind of bounce off. You just so shot I, me. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but we've also got some enemies that are a little bit smarter than others, which we, uh, we should be seeing in just a second if we can power through this next wave. Why don't you grab that heart there, buddy? Okay. So I'm checking on my, my radar here. It kind of gives me an indication of where these new guys are. And you can see that these are Zabitians, obviously from the Metroid series. They're a little bit smarter. Uh, if I fire a missile, they're, uh, they're at least smart enough to run out of the blast radius. Uh, but strategically, that also helps me out because what I can do very quickly is uh, kind of scatter them, uh, which will make it a little bit easier for me to pick them off one by one rather than necessarily, ouch, uh, trying to take heat from, uh, from the entire group. Now, as I mentioned, this is just one mission in Assault Mission. Um, we've got another wave of enemies here that I think this is hopefully the last one. Um, but uh, this one is really, it's about eight missions in, and that's not even halfway through what you're going to find just in this mode. Um, and of course, Corey and I, we're here playing uh, cooperatively together, uh, which we can do with uh, more than just two players if we want to. Uh, but the other great thing about Assault Mission is that I can play these alone if I want, and I can do that either on the ground or I can do that in the air. Oh man, talking and playing is not as easy as it may seem. All right, I'm gonna try to take these guys out. Oh, uh-oh. I think first thing I'm gonna do is grab an item because I could probably use it right about now. I'm running a little bit low on health. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in because there we go, nice. The other thing that's nice is using the motion to aim. It feels really natural. Um, and it's, I think it's just perfect here. Let's see if we can get these guys taken care of, Corey. Oh. Let me see if I can grab another one of these items. Whew. Now, separate from Assault Mission, the Metroid Blast attraction is also going to feature two additional modes, and those are also multiplayer. Uh, one is the ground versus air. Looks like we've got one enemy left. Where is this guy? He's right over there. Uh, and then the other is going to be a ground-only multiplayer free-for-all. Um, so this attraction alone, you know, from my perspective, is almost going to feel like it's its own game. Um, and that's just one of the many attractions in Nintendo Land. Today, you're going to also see the full range of experiences that Nintendo Land has to offer, some smaller than others. Uh, but you are going to see today how the competitive attraction, Mario Chase, has progressed since we first showed it. You're going to get a look at another of the fun and maybe a little bit simpler solo attractions. This one's going to be Balloon Trip Breeze. And personally, I hope you'll sit down and play it because I feel that that game has probably one of the most underappreciated pieces of music in the history of video games. And I know that at least a few of you out there must agree with me. Now, there's one more team attraction. And these, again, the team attractions being the deeper ones. One more of these that you're going to see. And this is called Pikmin Adventure. This is an action-based multiplayer attraction. It's fast-paced, and it is really fun. But it's fun in a different way from the strategic gameplay that we see in the main Pikmin series. Now there's another game that I want to talk to you about today that you will be playing on launch day, and that's New Super Mario Bros. U. Obviously, we've told you it's an all-new game, and it has all-new power-ups, including what you see here, which is Flying Squirrel Mario. All right, you also are going to see, obviously, the, uh, the baby Yoshis that we introduced at, uh, at E3. You may even see uh, some nice new abilities for old power-ups, uh, as you see right here. Obviously, we've also told you that uh, with New Super Mario Bros. U, uh, you can play in some modes as your Mii character uh, or as any Mii character that you've created. But that's not all that's new. Uh, this time, the map itself features something new, a wholly interconnected world. Now, this is a simple addition to the New Super Mario Bros. series, but it's one that the fans have been wanting to see for years. There are a lot of levels in this game and a lot of secrets to uncover. But what really sets the game apart is, once again, the Wii U gamepad and the new modes. We introduced Boost Mode at E3, and today we want to tell you about Boost Rush Mode. In Boost Rush Mode, you are racing to complete force scrolling levels as quickly as you can. And as you collect coins, the scroll speeds up. And that enables faster times, but it also is going to up the challenge for you. 
Now, Boost Rush is where the gamepad's boost block feature really turns from simple aid to super strategy. Because I'll tell you right now, co-op speedruns are going to require serious skill and coordination. And I think Mario fans are really going to love them. We've also added another new mode that I can tell you about today for the first time, and these are challenges. These are objective-based mini-levels that are going to test your Mario skills, and they're also going to help you be a super player. Now, some of these objectives may just require you to complete a level within a certain time limit, uh, or they may ask you to try to complete the level without ever touching the ground or any number of other objective or skill-based challenges. And these are the kind of challenges that Mario fans want, and we're doing it in ways that they've never experienced before. And then, with Miiverse integration, it's going to give you the opportunity to share those newly developed Mario skills with other players. But we're going to go into more detail on Miiverse in New Super Mario Bros. U and other games as we get closer to launch. Now, there's one last launch window game that I want to touch on today, and that's LEGO City Undercover. There she is, Lego City. Now, as we showed at E3, the vehicles, locations of the popular Lego City brick sets come to life in a massive world. And you're going to go undercover as Chase McCain. Hi there, I'm Chase. Chase McCain? You're a legend! And you're going to use the Wii U gamepad to track down criminal mastermind Rex Fury and put a stop to the crime wave that has swept the city. Now, as a big fan of the LEGO games and the LEGO bricks, I'm happy to announce that a special Chase McCain LEGO minifigure is going to come as a pre-order bonus while supplies last. And you're going to want to pre-order early to ensure you don't miss out on that special minifigure and all the action, fun, and comedy that fills LEGO City undercover. Hey, Harry, how many coffees have you had? Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Did I have six shots, or only five? Well... Okay, you've had enough. <laughs> so hopefully that gives you a clearer picture of the range of experiences in Nintendo Land, what's new about New Super Mario Bros. U, and why you're going to want to run out and get LEGO City as quickly as you can. These games are fun, but that's only a taste of what you'll be playing and what we have to share today. Reggie? Great. Thanks, guys. Nice job, Bill. You didn't die this time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just the start of the game news that we have for you today. There's a lot more to come. But first, let's break for something completely different. And I mean for Nintendo, something entirely different. And as a matter of fact, it's probably the most different non-gaming initiative Nintendo has ever introduced. It's different, but it's also a progression of the Nintendo experience in people's living, living room. Today, we as in tens of millions of households, primarily as a game console, attached to that big screen where the family gathers. Now, we're expanding with a broader entertainment experience. At E3, we talked about the three pillars supporting Wii U. Games, Miiverse, and something we didn't say much at all about back then, the one called entertainment. Well, it's time to bring that third pillar into focus. Today, we give it its real name, and we're pleased to announce Nintendo TV. And after me and we, you probably could have guessed how we'd spell it. <laughs> this is something we've been kicking around for a long time. And enthusiasm only grew as we saw we become the singular device that most people used to connect their TV to the internet. But in honesty, for our idea to fully come to life, we had to wait for the right technology to come along. And with Wii U, it has. In a minute, we're going to show you a deeper look so you can see for yourself. But first, let's take a look at a quick preview.
the person who spent too many of his waking hours figuring out how to power on this vision is Zach Fountain, a director of network business at Nintendo of America. He's here with us today, so please help me welcome him on stage to make a full and proper introduction to Nintendo TV. Zach? So we're gonna get comfortable here in these nice comfy chairs and enjoy a little Nintendo TV. So Zach, how would you describe Nintendo TV? Reggie, there's essentially three parts uh, to Nintendo TV. First, it's finding something to watch. So you can imagine a personalized program guide that tells you what's on Netflix, what's on Hulu Plus, what's on Amazon Instant Video, and what's on your DVR, and what's on your TV channels, all brought together in one guide. Second, when you do find something to watch, it's the ability to start the program directly from the gamepad. So you can think about this as the remote control aspect of Nintendo TV. And then third, once you're watching, having a little fun with others by engaging with those moments that unfold on live TV with friends and others. So find, watch, and engage. That's great. So uh, let's see it in action. Great. So we're looking at the home page of Nintendo TV. And the first thing I'll point out is everything we're showing today is on the gamepad. Nintendo TV is truly a second screen experience, but just so you can see it a little bit easier, we're outputting it to the big screen. Before we actually explore through these main categories of favorites, TV shows, movies, sports, and search, I want to point out the me in the upper left-hand corner. This is a personalized experience. So everyone in the household can personalize Nintendo TV for their own interests, and as we go through this demo, we'll be pointing out exactly what that means. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna choose TV. And immediately you'll see, obviously, TV shows in this section, but again, reinforcing the point that what you're viewing here is based on your interest as well as what's available on your sources. Live TV, on your DVR, and the popular services that you use, all brought together in one place. I can also explore where we are in a section called popular. Tying back to your profile, popular may mean that your friends have favorited this show, or it might mean that it's just trending overall. I can look at recommendations. Recommendations might mean Nintendo TV is making a recommendation, or in this case, it might mean that Reggie is personally recommending one of his favorite shows. I'm a big Breaking Bad fan. It is true. I can explore by my favorite channels. So if I'm watching one, a few channels on a consistent basis, I can very quickly access them and see what's on. And then for those of you that want a truly retro view, we've got the old classic grid available to you as well. When I dive a little bit deeper, I know Modern Family is one of Reggie's favorites, I then see what episodes are available, again, on my sources. And of course, I can also see when there's an upcoming episode. In this case, Modern Family is having the season premiere in just a few days. Information is important as well, and we provided it in context, so I, I can also access information related to the show that I'm interested in, and, and also have, you know, with the touch, access to other popular information sources. I have four icons at the bottom of the gamepad. The first is to add to your favorites. That's the gold star, and Modern Family is already in the favorites, so if it wasn't in the favorites, it wouldn't be gold. I can set a recording for the series or an individual episode. I can see friends that have favorited this show, both from Miiverse as well as importing Facebook friends as well. And that last icon on the bottom is how Reggie would have sent his personal recommendation. When I find an episode that I want to watch, it's as simple as touching the episode. And then I'm going to be presented with my viewing options, again spanning video applications on the Wii U, what's recorded on your DVR, and what's on live TV. So really, here is the, the big innovation with uh, Nintendo TV, bringing all of your services to one place for you to choose from your Netflix, from Hulu Plus, from all of the different services that you participate in, plus live TV. All brought together in one place, yeah. Before we actually start watching the program, we're gonna show a few other categories, so I'll head into movies. And just some slight differences in movies. I'm gonna uh, choose a, a movie here that interests me. And you'll see that because reviews um, are important, we're gonna have built-in reviews that you can easily access, as well as 
you will see the ability to watch a trailer um, on the gamepad. So if you're watching something else on the main screen, you'll be able to watch that trailer on the gamepad um, to decide if you're gonna watch that next. And again, similar to TV shows, once I'm ready to watch this program, I'm just gonna touch and it's gonna show the source that's available. In this case, it's Netflix. On to sports. Sports looks different, uh, different because for the sports fans in the audience, it has to because the, spore, uh, the score is of important context. You might want to tune into that, that uh, show because it's a tied in the fourth quarter and a few minutes left. So we're presenting that quick view as a game card. And we're also moving from your profile your favorite teams earlier in the list. So you can very quickly access them. Search, uh, powerful and simple. Typed in baseball, it's gonna pull uh, what's available to me across movies and TV shows, and I can obviously scroll through and make a selection. Again, pulling from all your available sources, whatever you, you subscribe to. Last view of the five icons is favorites, and up to this point we've really been in discovery, trying to find something new to watch, but favorites is very different. Favorites is directly linked to your profile, there's no recommendations in here. And this is basically Nintendo TV telling you, you have these interests, you have these favorite TV shows, movies, sports teams. This is what's on right now. This is what's on in a few minutes. This is what's just been recorded on your DVR. This is what's just been added to one of your popular services like Netflix. And as you saw in the video, I can also be on the couch with others in the family and quickly represent their interests as well, including bringing the entire family together and all of those interests in one place to make a viewing decision if everyone's sitting together. And again, all of this is personalized. So if you have a member of the family who doesn't want to input their profile, they could choose to opt out and they don't participate in that part. They, they have full control in their settings. Exactly. One last thing to show you from the main homepage is the built-in remote. And I love this because it's also going back to your profile and it's automatically adding your favorite TV channels to this outer layer of the remote. So when you know where you're going, you can just, with a quick touch, be on your way. I can also interact with my DVR from this screen, as well as control simple aspects of my TV. So let's go ahead and, and watch something. So I'm gonna go back into Modern Family. And we're gonna go ahead and watch the Halloween episode. And I'm gonna choose a TV channel. So now the view on the gamepad looks very different. So on these outer screens, you'll be seeing Modern Family begin to play. And what's happening now on the gamepad is Nintendo TV is capturing those moments that actually happen on live TV. And it's capturing it in a few ways. It's providing you a thumbnail and a description. And once that exists, when that's, once that a moment exists, I can then interact with these moments. I can share by commenting. And based on my profile settings, that might share out to Facebook, Twitter, Certainly Meverse. I can, whoops. I can uh, indicate an emotion, how that specific moment made me feel. And then I can interact in other ways. I can obviously see other comments. I can take part in polls. I can uh, get a pulse of that um, broader social buzz and other fun content as well. So you can just imagine this experience for sports. Before we go to sports, highlight that the, the episode has been going on, so things that happened even earlier before you tuned in would be highlighted. You could go back to just get a quick update as to what's happened in the show that you might have missed. Yeah, Nintendo TV is not just generally synced to what program you're watching, it's synced to specifically where you are in that program. So again, if you joined in progress, to Reggie's point, you could move backwards and catch up. So let's look at sports. So again, sports looks different because it needs to. And here the gamepad view looks very different. On the left-hand side, you've got all of that data that's important to deepen your experience in sports. I've got a quick game view. I can access stats, players, scores. And then of course, on the right side, the moments are still being captured. And within those moments, again, I can interact and I can learn more about what I've just, what I've just seen. So a combination of engagement and also learning more about what we're seeing on live television. And the same feature, you could go back and see highlighted plays that you may have missed earlier in the program. Absolutely. So that's an overview of Nintendo TV. That's great. So um, 
Why don't you summarize for us? I mean, what's the, what's the big idea with Nintendo TV? I think as we've, we've seen today, Nintendo TV is bringing together how you watch and what you watch into this one uh, seamless second screen experience. And in the process, the point is to make it simple, again, to watch TV and, and also have some more fun as well. I also want to thank our development partners, i.tv, who've done a, just a tremendous job of bringing to life Nintendo TV. That's great. Zach, thanks a million. Thank you. Good job. So we'll be rolling out Nintendo TV in the United States and Canada, and we're exploring the ex expansion of the service throughout the Americas. There's some incredible stuff inside Nintendo TV. But I should also point out that thanks to the internet connection on the Wii U hardware, all of your YouTube and other web-based video are obviously all available as well. But as incredible as Nintendo TV is, just as amazing is the fact that you won't pay a penny more for it. Nintendo TV is included in every Wii U purchase at no additional cost and with no monthly fee. And I'd like to stop to just put this in perspective for a moment. It's always been our goal to try and maximize consumer value by what we include with a hardware purchase. So it's only natural that the same strategy applies to Wii U, but in a significantly larger way. It's not just a high definition console that will again change the way people play. Wii U is also a, a, the only game console with a seamlessly connected, fully integrated second screen which itself features a gyroscope, an accelerometer, and a camera. It also delivers an integrated online gaming community, Miiverse, an infrared connectivity, and video chat, also at no extra cost. And of course, all of those elements of Nintendo TV that you just saw. We've told you what the price is but it's nearly impossible to put a proper price tag on the total value. For those of you here in attendance today, you'll be able to take a look at Nintendo TV for yourselves as soon as we're done, and Zach will be around to answer a few of your questions. But now, let's move back to the games. At E3, we let you know that Platinum Games was hard at work on Wii U. So let's take a look at what they've prepared. Bayonetta 2 is the sequel to the original Bayonetta and is being produced by Atsushi Inaba and directed by Yusuke Hashimoto, the producer of the original Bayonetta. It will be a Wii U exclusive published by Nintendo. And, they, and that may not have been the Platinum Games title that you were expecting, but we do have a new video for that game as well, including its final name. Alien invasion of Earth will be met by a group of fearless warriors that number just 100 souls, 100 wonderful defenders of our world. Fists will erupt with volcanic fury. Blades will slice with razor sharp precision. And bullets will fire with incredible speed. Their faces are forever masked. Their tombs are forever unknown. They are. The 
The wonderful 101. I knew we forgot someone. You. As we mentioned at E3, the wonderful 101 is a collaboration between producer Otsushi Inabe and director Hideki Kamiya. This team of heroes, their massive transformation, and the nonstop action of this alien invasion can be experienced only on Wii U. We're very excited to be partnering with Platinum Games on these two key games. Next, we can confirm one more project you may have heard about. Capcom is bringing Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate to North America and Europe for both Wii U and Nintendo 3DS in March next year. And the gameplay is great. Wii U will support online multiplayer and also local co-op mode, where you can progress simultaneously between Wii U and Nintendo 3DS. The full details will be coming soon, so stay tuned for that. We've got one final guest with us here today. I'd like to invite Activision Publishing CEO Eric Hirschberg to join me. Activision is known around the world for blockbuster entertainment and several of the most successful franchises in game history. So Eric, come on out. Well, Eric, I know there are a lot of people here who are pumped to hear what you have to say, so have at it. All right, thanks, Reggie. We're, uh, we're equally pumped to say it. So um, it's great to be here with you all because it looks to us like uh, this November, Nintendo will once again uh, bring a lot of freshness, a lot of innovation, a lot of new ideas to video games and to the living room overall with the launch of the Wii U. And we're excited because we think we've got a few great games that are going to really help show it off. Uh, as all of you, I'm sure, would agree, our industry is going through a time of tremendous disruption right now, driven by everything from new devices to new business models to new competition to new consumer behavior. And there's more competition than ever before, but there are also more gamers than ever before. In fact, I would argue that games, video games, have become the entertainment uh, medium of choice for a generation. And historically, nothing has gotten gamers more excited and supercharged that interest than the possibilities that are brought about by new innovative game platforms, which is, of course, why we're here today. With its innovative second screen on the gamepad and its HD-ready graphics, uh, Nintendo's uh, Wii U, we think, is the most capable Nintendo platform ever, particularly for the types of games that we love to make. And it obviously gives our, developer, our developers a lot of new toys to play with and consider in their creative process. What I've always most admired about Nintendo is that their ideas about hardware and software are so tightly intertwined. And this has also been true a few times in Activision's history, most recently and never more so than with our recent launch of Skylanders. In fact, when Jerry Storch, our, uh, our, head, uh, our partner who's the head of uh, Toys R Us, first saw Skylanders, he said that he thought it was an idea that Nintendo could have come up with. Now, I took this to be a huge compliment. Um, but for all of us at Activision, it always comes down to one thing and one thing only, and that's making great entertainment experiences for passionate gamers all over the world. And we're really excited by the possibilities of the Wii U, which is why we're working to deliver a great lineup of titles which will be available in the Wii U launch window. So to take a look at what we're, what we're up to, let's show you.
Now, last year, as you know, we brought virtual play together with physical play in a whole new way with uh, the revolutionary Skylander Spyro's Adventure. Now, that game quickly went on to become the number one selling new kids IP of 2011, and year to date in 2012, it's also the best selling video game right now. Uh, and this year, the adventure only gets bigger, excuse the pun, with Skylander's Giants. Uh, with the Wii U, gamers can play using tilt and touch screen controls, as well as drag and drop functionality with their characters right from their gamepad. Plus, the touch screen delivers real-time character stats and level objectives in the palm of the gamer's hand. Now, we'll also be releasing some of our top licensed properties, as you saw, like 007 Legends, which celebrates 50 years of James Bond action by letting gamers play some of the most iconic action sequences from Bond films throughout the decades, including a few from this year's upcoming film, Skyfall. And then, of course, there's Wipeout, everyone's favorite crazy, uh, insane obstacle course based on the, the popular game show. And we're also releasing an all-new Transformers game called Transformers Prime, which is based on the multiple Emmy Award-winning television series viewed by about 160 million people worldwide. And this one will be exclusive to Nintendo platforms. Now, there is one more game that we'll be bringing to the Wii U, uh, but it didn't make the trailer, and I hope you don't mind, but uh, we thought we'd do a live demo. Instead, we brought it along, and uh, it's called Call of Duty Black Ops 2. You've heard of it. <laughs> so Treyarch, who you know well, our award-winning development studio, who are the developers of Black Ops 2, uh, also have a long history of bringing Call of Duty games to Nintendo platforms, dating all the way back to the GameCube. But I think what Treyarch is making this year is nothing short of the most groundbreaking Call of Duty game yet. And it looks great on the Wii U. For the first time in the Call of Duty franchise, Black Ops 2 takes gamers into the near future, where a whole new arsenal of technology and weapons and gameplay mechanics become possible and open up. Now, with over 35 million average monthly players online, Obviously, the highlight for a lot of Call of Duty players is multiplayer. And Black Ops 2 raises that bar again with a completely reimagined approach to our multiplayer game. And we're going to show you what it looks like right now on the Wii U. I'm going to bring up my good friends Jacob Porter and Jason Addis, who are going to do a live demo. Come on up, guys. Now, uh, the reason that Jason and Jacob are going to be doing the demo is because if I did it myself, I would kill everyone way too quickly. It would be all headshots. It would be over in a flash. So we're going to let these two guys do the honors. Um, the guys are going to be playing in a map located in Singapore called Cargo. And they're playing in a mode called Combat Training. Now, this is the full multiplayer experience, only you're playing, in this case, against AI bots. And it's a great mode to build your skills if you're playing by yourself or also with a friend, as the guys are doing here. Now, graphically, you can see that Singapore, this cargo map, really brings into light the incredible graphics that Treyarchs are bringing to Black Ops 2. And we've never been able to achieve this level of realism before on a Nintendo platform. You can see the atmosphere and the textures and the lighting are all on a new level for what we've been able to do on a Nintendo platform. Um, and one of the, and, uh, the other thing to note is that it's all being delivered in full HD and in Call of Duty's signature 60 frames per second. Now, one of the coolest things about Black Ops 2, as I mentioned, is the near future weaponry much of which is drone technology. Now, you can actually play as a lot of these drone weapons. Now, Jacob just took control of a weaponized quad rotor helicopter, so he's taking the fight to the air, which is a new gameplay mechanic for multiplayer in Call of Duty. And we've also reinvented Create a Class, which gives gamers more control and more choices over how to outfit their soldier to fit their style of gameplay than ever before. When we're doing it on the Wii U, all that takes place right in the palm of your hand on the second screen. So you can change your loadout on the fly, mid-game, and not miss a second of the action. Now, players can also use the second screen to view their mini-map while they're playing, or even to call in a score streak right from the touch screen. You can tell that Treyarch had some fun uh, figuring out the ways to leverage the gamepad second screen. And uh, what I'm proud of is it's not just for mere novelty, but it really does enhance the gameplay experience. They've also built in support, I think it's worth noting, for the Wii Remote and Nunchucks, as well as the new Pro Controller. So whichever controller you're using on the Wii U, you'll be able to play Black Ops 2 with it. And speaking of enhancing the gameplay experience, one of the coolest things about Black Ops 2 for the Wii U is how we're using the gamepad to turn what was a split screen into two separate full screens. 
Instead of splitting the screen down the middle when you're playing with a buddy, one player can now play on full screen on the TV while the other plays with a second full screen on the game pad. So this whole time, Jason's been playing alongside Jacob, full screen on his game pad. Both guys can play here together competitively or cooperatively in the same room without having to share the same screen. Now, if you've ever had to fight for who controls the TV in your house, the gamers will also appreciate the fact that you can play the game directly from the game pad without using the TV at all. But I don't think any of that's going to matter in a minute here because it looks like Jason's about ready to unleash uh, a score streak that we call the Drone Swarm, which should be, there they come. Okay, so we're going to rain a whole squadron of drones down on Singapore, and I can tell you it's not a very pleasant time to be an AI bot right now. Um, so that's just a little slice of Call of Duty Black Ops 2 multiplayer for the Wii U. And it's going to be, of course, even more dramatic when you have all your friends playing together online in a full-on multiplayer battle. So round of applause for Jason and Jacob. <laughs> Thanks. Good job. Now, of course, Call of Duty Black Ops 2 will also uh, on the Wii U come with the full epic single player campaign, which also has tons of innovations. Uh, it's got branching storylines and nonlinear gameplay baked into campaign for the first time. And of course, our friends, the zombies, will also be back and better than ever. Uh, we don't have uh, any reveals on that today, but stay tuned, they'll be coming soon. But what we do have will be in full force on the Wii U. So you really will be getting the full Call of Duty experience this November on the Wii U, and we think it looks great. So that's it from Activision this morning. Uh, with that, I'm going to bring back Reggie. Eric, thank you so thank much. You, All right. The, the games look great. Call of Duty really is the complete package. HD graphics that look out of this world and the thrill of Call of Duty multiplayer on Wii U. And those of you here with us here today will be able to play it for yourself shortly, in just a few minutes. Now, beyond Nintendo Land and New Super Mario Bros. U, it's still a little too early to guarantee exactly which games will be here for you on launch day itself and which will come shortly thereafter. But I can assure you that this launch library, beginning on day one, will be the strongest for any Nintendo home platform in our history. You can probably judge that from the games that have already been announced by their publishers. Nintendo and our publishing partners will identify the exact release dates. But here's the roster of what's coming for the full launch window from November 18th to the end of next March. More than 50 games in total. I hope you've enjoyed what we've presented, a look at how the Wii U gamepad makes several new styles of play possible, even within a single Metroid attraction, and how that Metroid experience itself will exist alongside 11 others inside Nintendo Land, how Nintendo TV promises the same kind of innovation for TV viewing as Wii U itself does for gaming. And I know many of you are looking forward to the arrival of the newly announced titles like Bayonetta 2, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, and Call of Duty Black Ops 2, all on Wii U. We've come here today not just to make news, but to give you a better sense for how Wii U will change the way you play games, how it'll connect your gaming friends, and how it will change the way you watch television. 
The agent of that change is the Wii U gamepad, a fully integrated second screen that doesn't exist anywhere else. We can't wait for you to get your hands on it because it's the next advance in gaming. It's how you will play next. Thanks for being with us, and we'll close today by letting you see some of those games in action. Thanks again.